Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us. Welcome to St. Stephen's and our Sunday morning worship. I'm the Reverend Allison Cornell, and you joining us online. We're glad to have you. Um, we do have a few announcements, as we usually do, before we begin our worship this morning. Uh, the first one that I want to make sure folks know, um, I know I do, but uh, I don't know if everyone does, the little forward day-by-day -day booklets, the new ones are in. We have a couple back there on the table if you want to take one. I think there's a couple more in the parish hall on in the, or the rack there, and then we've got some more down in the office. So if you need one and you don't see one uh, uh, available here, let me know and we'll make sure that we move some more up here uh, to stock us up. So uh, if you're somebody that likes to have the forward day-by-day -day devotionals, they are in for the next three months. Uh, so make sure you pick one of those up. Um, we have, a, uh, as usual, a bit of a busy schedule coming up. Uh, this coming Friday, we will be doing our first Friday film night where we're going to watch the last three episodes of The Chosen in season two. So we've done season one, we're finishing up season two. It's the last three episodes, they're about an hour each, and uh, we offer a light supper to go with that. And if you'd like to come and watch those with us, we have a little discussion afterwards. Uh, we in, in, uh, ask you to put that on your calendar and join us on Friday. Start at five, and we should be done by eight in the evening. So if that's something you uh, think you're interested in, come join us. Uh, we have a, a small group, but a, a group that really gets into watching, and, and there's some funny bits that come up in these episodes, and we laugh at them, and we talk about them afterwards. So there's that. On Saturday morning at 8 in the morning, if you are someone that can help out with some uh, weed pulling or weed spraying or weed cutting and some trimming of some of our shrubberies, we're going to have a landscape day. We're going to start at 8, go until roughly 11, 12, depends on how hot it gets that day. Um, so bring your gardening gloves and your, your, your shears and, and uh, if you've got trimmers or, wet, or reed whackers. Uh, and I understand that the New Testament church is going to join us as well in providing some extra help because uh, we've had abundant rains and when we get abundant rains, we get abundant weeds. So we're going to try and tidy things up around here outside and uh, we welcome any that can come and uh, offer some help with that on Saturday uh, that would be the 6th at 8 in the morning. Um, then the following weekend will be the second Saturday of the month, and our second Saturday Supper Club is going to Olive Garden. We're going to have dinner over there, and it's just a chance to get together and have some fellowship time because the Saturday night service doesn't often have a chance to have some fellowship time. So we built this in to allow us to all get together and talk and, uh, and share some time together after our Saturday night worship. But it's not just Saturday Night Worshippers. It's open to anyone who wants to join us for dinner over at Olive Garden. And we'll get there about 6.30. Gives us a chance to finish up here, tidy things up, and then get over to the restaurant. So 6.30 on not this coming Saturday, but the one after uh, over at Olive Garden. There are a number of other announcements that are on the announcement sheet. You can download this off of our website or pick one up, take it with you. Uh, are there other announcements that may not be on here? Renee, you're raising your hand. The primary is on Tuesday. Just remind people, remind people to get out there and vote. If you have not done your mail-in ballot and you're going to the polls, make sure you get out there and vote on Tuesday. Sherry uh, and Peggy are the mentors for our e EFM, which is Education for Ministry program. Uh, just about anybody who's taken this can uh, vouch for it as life-changing. It's transformational. Uh, you get four years of classes that are at seminary level, the kind of education that I got to train for uh, becoming a priest. So it's great stuff, and if you want additional information, please see Peggy and Sherry. Other announcements? No, you do not have to become a priest to take education for ministry. That is true. That's a good clarification point. It's for anybody who is interested in going deeper in their faith, uh, and there's lots of aspects to that. It's not just theology and Bible. It's mother other things. Yes. We are all ministers, but not all necessarily going into ordained ministry. That is true, and uh, helps us to identify what it is that we can do in ministry. Other comments? Okay. <laughs> um, 
Again, make sure you take the announcements with you. There are other dates of things that are coming up that I call your attention to. This morning, we will begin with our opening song, Bless the Lord My Soul. And I would point out that this is a Teze weekend, the fifth Sunday of the month. We do Teze type songs, which are short and repetitive. So in this case, we will read each, or we will sing each one four times through when there is just one verse. There's one that's coming up that has two verses, and we'll do it twice to get a total of four verses in. So the first one we will sing four times, and it's Bless the Lord My Soul. It's in the Gather Hymnal, and it's number 576. Please stand as you are able. in our bulletins at the top of page two. Welcome to this place of ancient origins, a house of prayer for many and home to all who come. Welcome to this gathering place, friend and stranger, saint and sinner, all who gather here. Come with hope or hesitation. Come with joy or yearning. All who hunger, all who thirst for life in all its fullness. Generous God, generous Savior, touch us through your Spirit. And our praise song this morning is in the hymnal 1982, and it's number 385. name. We claim Christ's promised presence. Let us say together the collect for this morning. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. Please be seated for the lessons. 
Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up into my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests, and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion, When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return to them their homes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 107, found on page 3 in your bulletin. Let us say this in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the land of fire. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he has satisfied the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider well the mercies of the Lord. Our second lesson is a reading from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living in that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. 
someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them in a parable, The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to restore my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. This morning we've got a couple of uh, helpers over here, Juniper and Arwen. I'm going to ask them a quick question. Can you see this picture right here? Can you tell me what's in that picture? (laughs) Butterflies. Is that what you think? Yeah? Yeah. Butterflies. So I have a quick question to ask you about butterflies. How do they become butterflies? Do you remember? That's right. They, they start as caterpillars, right? They go into a cocoon, and when they come out of the cocoon, then they are butterflies. That's right. Thank you for that help. They go into a transformation. They, uh, they, they start as one thing, and then they become something else completely new. So I appreciate you guys helping me out with that. How many of us feel like we have been transformed into someone new through our faith in God the Father and Son and Holy Spirit? How many of us? Most of us have hands up. All right, now, next question. What in you changed? What was the old you and what is the new you? How do you feel like you transformed? Anyone? I don't have as much fear as I used to. Not as much fear. Well, very little. Very little. Diminished fear. Very. <laughs> Alvarita. You're less critical? Less critical. Anton. More confident. Anyone over here? Wait a minute. You gonna say the same thing? What are you gonna say? Less anxious? Less judgmental? Because of EFM, I was able to change my destination. Because of EFM, you were able to change? Change my destination. Your destination. Okay. All right. Overall friendliness. Overall friendliness. Becoming more open to others? Less selfish. Less selfish. These are all great answers, by the way. Less swayable by peer pressure. Less, less swayable by peer pressure. Able to stand firm in your faith and not give in to what others might be doing? Be happy. And to be happy. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, yeah, transformation, the change of ourselves, is absolutely key to being a Christian, to being, I will go you one further, to being a spiritual person, for those that like to say I'm spiritual and not religious. Because the message throughout the scriptures and found also in other religions is one of transformation, of learning to become the person that God intends for us to be. And the way that we do that, it's, it's hard work, But I would say it's also divine work. It's holy work. It needs God's help. Because if we're going to become 
the kind of person God intends for us to be. We need to know what that person is. We need to know what it looks like to be that person that God intends us to be. And so we need God's help in identifying and, and defining what that looks like. Now the way that this change usually begins, I find, oh, did I lose? No, there it is. Um, I find that the way that this usually begins is that we come to a place where we recognize that we can change, that it's possible for us to change, to become something new, something different than what we have been. And we begin to believe, we come to believe, that God will help us become that person. We begin to trust in God and look for God's guidance and God's help in becoming that new person. And we see this in the crowds that came to hear Jesus. When he was preaching, when he was going from town to town, the way that he interacted with other people, the way he treated people, we see that in some of his miracles and what he did for people, how he gave of himself to help others. And the people back then, they were moved. They had their hearts touched they felt inspired and encouraged by the vision that God, through Christ, was giving about what this world and what each person could be. As we say in our Lord's Prayer, to bring heaven here on earth. They began to get excited about that, and they wanted to know more about this, and so they followed him around to get some of those clues, some of those hints, some of those suggestions of how they then could change themselves. And we, although we don't have the benefit of hearing Jesus directly to, have, to be in his presence while he's preaching and teaching and doing his, uh, his thing, his miracles and whatnot, we get those stories of those that did see that in our scriptures. And the clues are still there. The, the actions, the definitions, the guidance is all still there. And once we decide that we want to change the direction and the content of ourselves and our lives. The real hard work and, I would say, heart, H-E-A-R-T, work, begins. You see, we find it rather easy to note other people's faults, failings, sins, errors, mistakes. It's really easy for us to point out what's wrong with someone else but when it comes to looking at ourselves, examining our own stuff, our action, our words, our thoughts, well, we're less inclined to want to do that, right? And we see that in some of the lessons that are in the New Testament where Jesus, at one point he says to uh, his followers, uh, you see the speck in your brother's eye, but you ignore the log in your own eye. In another place, he sees two people that go up to the temple to pray, a Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee says, he stood apart and prayed, says, I thank you, God, that I'm not greedy and dishonest or an adulterer like everyone else. I thank you that I'm not like this tax collector over here. Meanwhile, the tax collector stood apart at a distance, would not even raise his face to heaven and beat on his breast and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus says, of these two, the tax collector really has the more appropriate attitude in praying to God, in looking at himself and seeing there's stuff I need to change. And then we've got also the story about the adulterer brought by the crowd for Jesus for his judgment. And they say, look, we caught her in the act. And Jesus waits a few minutes and he says, okay, well then let's let the first one of you who has no sin be the one to cast the first stone. And that was aimed at getting that crowd to kind of do again some little looking inside, not looking at what's happening in front of them, this woman, but looking at themselves and saying, yeah, after we stone her, am I going to be next? Because I'm guilty of something that might be worth this stoning. And they decide to drop their stones and wander away. Jesus wants the crowd to take a good long look at themselves. 
see if maybe they have some sins that they're guilty of and to ask themselves if they would want to be that next person with the stoning. Our lessons today continue this same idea of transformation. In the lesson from Hosea, we see that God is speaking through Hosea when he says, the more I called them, the more they went away from me. They kept offering sacrifices to the bowels and offering incense to idols. God then speaks of the countless times that God tried to get them to see God's loving care and direction in their lives with the people, to get them to follow in his ways. And Hosea ends with the promise that God's anger will not continue forever, that he can't. He has to go back to his mercy and compassion. And he says, there is coming a day when I will lead them back home. In the psalm, it also speaks of God's desire to help those who turn to him and his mercy and compassion for those who cry out in their distress. God is eager to help. God wants to help us. God is waiting for us to invite God into our lives and begin that relationship, to begin to get that insight into what it is that God can do for us to get us to be those people that he wants us to be. Paul's letter to the Colossians, in it Paul identifies some of our old ways, the things that we used to do, the things we used to be, Anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, and lying. He says, put those to death. Don't, don't, don't practice those anymore. Let them go. And then later he says, seeing that you have stripped off the old self in its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. Well, there it is. Boom. Right there. Transformation. The old self, gone. The new self is part of who we are. Transforming those old ways, the way we used to be, into a new self. And that's done through the knowledge that God gives us through Jesus, through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit. And I want you to note that that last part there, that Paul puts it in the present tense. He says that the new self, which is being renewed. It's not a past tense. It's not a one and done. It's not like you say, okay, I'm a believer, I'm a, I'm a Christian, uh, and it's all done. It's not that at all. It's an ongoing process. This morning up at St. Raphael, we had one person that said, I'm a work in progress. And it's like, yep, that's exactly it. We are work in progress. We are becoming, but we are not there yet. We are becoming the people that God intends for us to be. In the gospel lesson, Jesus warns, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Jesus tells them this parable about the greedy man, and almost to the point of hoarding, and how it might all be useless in the blink of an eye. You could be dead in a second, and all that that you work for, can't take it with you. Got to leave it behind. Now, my favorite rock band, Toto, has a, a song that has a lyric in it. And the lyric says, how many zeros do you need? Is it thousands? Is it millions? Is it billions? How much do you really need to amass for yourself? And Jesus' point in the story is not that we shouldn't be planning for our old age to put something aside to live on. That's not it at all. That's a wise thing to do. The question that Jesus is getting at is taking stock of yourself and seeing, is there something more you could be doing with what God has given you? The blessings that you have been granted. What ways that they and we could be rich toward God and what would God have us do with those blessings to see if there's places where we can enrich others and not just hold on too tightly to what God has given us now the Bible is filled with people who began to learn about God about who God is and that God is a loving and caring and intimately involved with God's people with each 
one of us with God's creation. And that God wants to reveal God's self to every person, everyone, as soon as they're willing to enter into that relationship. God will not force God's self on anyone. God waits for the invitation. God waits for the opening. God waits for the welcome. And once that has begun, then we can begin that transformation. We will become who we're intended to be with God's help. And it's in that place, when we enter into that relationship, that we begin to get to that place of joy and peace and love. Our church, this church here, and for that matter, any church, is a gathering of people who are engaged in, who believe in, and who want to continue in this process of transformation. That's why we get together. The reasons that we come together is to continue in that transformation of ourselves and then we take it out into the world. We gather together weekly to thank God for all that we have been blessed with. We gather together weekly to ask God to help us and to help others that are in need, both close to us and around the world. We gather together weekly to study God's word for clues about who we are and who we can become, the kind of person we can become, who we want to become. We gather together weekly to be inspired to take our new selves out into our lives and into the world to make a difference in other people's lives. We gather together weekly to encourage and love one another because we know that we are all connected in this thing called human frailty and all the challenges that this life brings. We gather together weekly because we know that we are being transformed day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute in some cases, through the renewing of our minds and our spirits and turning into the person that God intends for us to be. It is hard work. However, we can do it with God's help. Amen. Please stand as you are able. And we'll say together the affirmation of our faith from the Iona community on the bottom of page five. Let us affirm our faith together, saying, we believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the world, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Prayers of the people. O oh, Jesus, you sat at table with the betrayed, marginalized, and rejected of Palestine. We pray for those today who do not feel welcome in their daily lives. Help us to be hospitable to all we meet in our daily lives. Christ, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. O oh, Jesus, you identified with the naked, with those who had no place to lay their heads, and with the hungry and thirsty. We pray for the homeless those without clothing and food, those in need of basic comforts in our community. Help us to be faithful in caring for these people around us, especially the people in Tennessee and Kentucky who have been uh, afflicted with the floods. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh Jesus, you belong to a refugee family. 
We pray for all the displaced people in our world and for the nations to unite in caring for those seeking asylum and new lives of hope and safety, especially in the Ukraine. Help us to see you in each person seeking refuge and extend our welcome to them. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Jesus, you cared for your companions and for the little ones who surrounded you. We pray for our family, friends, and neighbors, and for those for whom you have given us special care. For the first peoples of this land, especially the Apache people, that we may honor each other and work together for our common good. In the diocesan cycle of prayer for St. James the Apostle in Tempe. In the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Church of the Province of West Africa. Christ, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh, Jesus, you prayed that we might be one as you and the Father are one. We praise that during this week ahead, we may feel at home with one another and with you in our midst. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us humbly confess our sins to God. <clears throat> Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We who are many and come from many places are one in Christ. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace, guys. You may be seated. We come now to our uh, communion part of our service. As always, we welcome everyone to come forward and receive communion in this church. You can come up to the altar rail at the appropriate time and extend your hand to receive the bread. And we have gluten-free bread for everyone. Uh, and then if you'll hold on to it, and we'll have either Nancy or Dottie come by with the chalice, you may dip it into the wine. It is real wine. Uh, if you prefer not to have the wine, you can take the bread without the wine. And if you are um, not feeling ready to receive communion with us this morning, you can cross your arms like this over your chest and we will give you a blessing instead. Any questions about how that goes? We are in tincting, dipping into the wine. We're not drinking from the chalice at this time for continued COVID reasons. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Made one in Christ and one in, with one each other, May we offer our gifts and with them ourselves a single, holy, and living sacrifice. Please stand as you are able and let us sing together the doxology. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise. We offer you praise, dear God, and hearts lifted high, for in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you, with the angels of light who envelop us with Stephen and the host of heaven, with all the saints before and beside us, we sing to you. And with our loved ones, separate from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us, we join in the song of your unending greatness.
Blessed is our friend and teacher Jesus, who walks with us the road of our world's suffering, and who is known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given to you. In the same way, he took the, cu- he took the wine, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and drink it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine. May they become for us your body and blood, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Loving God, through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer which your earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread and this cup. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. is now made ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who may not have been here for a long time, or are here for the first time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who may feel you have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
At this time in our service, we like to recognize anyone who's having a birthday or anniversary. Do we have any birthdays? Oh, not today. And my birthday is after today. It's a kind of a special anniversary. Yeah. A gotcha day. Years ago today, first day Anton lived. Eighteen years ago today, Anton came to be in your home. Became family for, with you. Wonderful. We don't have a special prayer for that one because it's a birthday prayer and an anniversary prayer for like a marriage, but we are grateful for you all being here and celebrating that. And uh, I believe there's a little dinner thing later. Okay. Olive Garden tonight at 6. All right. Other birthdays or anniversaries? Christina's birthday this week? Yes. Okay. Others? Well, let us say together the birthday prayer for Christina, raising your right hand and getting your little green card out of your uh, pew there. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Other anniversaries? Nope. Healing prayers. Special healing requests. My cousin Joan is having a knee replacement this week. Joan and a knee replacement surgery. I need more. MJ's got a more. <laughs> broken arm, so we're going to pray for healing on her broken arm. Others? For Doris. For Doris. Rita, Sandy Dushensky, Ed, and Raymond, and Rosemary, and Eddie, and Liz doesn't need healing, but yeah, yeah, and Ed, and Mark, and Ed Stone, and Cheryl Stone, so Blindell, and James, okay, no, others? My uh, nephew, Thomas. Thomas, okay, we're lifting up Thomas. And Pat Thralls and Domingo. Yep, okay. All right then, let us raise our right hands and say together the healing prayer. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Any travelers this week? Yes. Uh, for Pat Wick. Okay. For nephew and wife heading to San Antonio. Pat Thralls will be coming back next week. And Pat Thralls is also traveling. Both are Pats. Uh, Charles is headed off to the Philippines. Doreen, right, she's gone to uh, the motorcycle rally, right? Sturgis up in, where is that, North Dakota? North Dakota. Yeah. Whew. So, yeah, another traveler. Any other travelers? We've got a lot of travelers this week. All right, let us say the traveler's prayer. Raise your right hands and say with me. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, Preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journeys in through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gratitudes, things that you're grateful for or blessings that you've received. Uh, yes. I'm there. Yeah. Uh, other blessings, gratitudes behind me? Yes. Yes. The unexpected visit of my son and my nephew and his family. And thank goodness they didn't overlap one another. Yeah. And <laughs> Nancy's feeling a bit like the Holiday Inn, <laughs> having family come and visit. So. Um, I was just very grateful when I went to visit Phyllis for Mary this week. She was in such a good mood. All right, so Phyllis Fortenberry, one of our members. Others? 
All right then. Oh, yes. A bad sprain and not a broken foot. Amen and hallelujah, right? All right. Very well then. Let us turn to our post-communion prayer. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, by our communion with you, have celebrated that one true sacrifice, which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. Keep us firm in the foundation of your word and truth, and guide us in your will and your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the everlasting God shield you east and west and wherever you go. And the blessing of Christ of all love be upon you. And the blessing of the Spirit of all grace be upon you. The blessing of the Holy Trinity be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. People of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are called to love and serve. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in God's Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And our closing song is in the Gather Hymnal. It's number 626, Nothing Can Trouble. <laughs>